we now have a hole here. And this is where I say the physics of this area gets really weird, because, well, this hole... You'll see. Geronimo! So this hole takes you all the way through the hole in the room with the spring grass and the room near the inscription, and it takes you to this hidden room here. So how we went down a nostril and ended up on a level above all the place that we went to, I'm not sure how physics really work there, it's just kind of weird, but apparently that's how it works. Uh, there's a drift bloom here for some reason you want to ascend again, there's also some more blossom here, you're kind of in like a grassy oasis inside the temple, which is actually where the gem is hidden, so we're... Actually, at this point, pretty close to the end here. Oh, well, we are close to the end. We're at the gem right now, so... All in all, not really a very lengthy uh, area. I thought it would actually take me a bit longer to get through this section, but... Apparently not, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Blossom can go ahead and leave. We have no need for it. Is there anything else here that I want? Not really, it's just kind of a... Oh, there's a Sableye here for some strange reason. We already captured it way back in Chroma Rooms. So why there's a Sableye randomly here, I don't know. You can use the Drifloom, by the way, if you want to head back up. In case you're wondering where it takes you, it just takes you to the... Uh, the top here. The, uh, it takes you up all three floors. Which, by the way, how did I fall down three floors and not break my legs? I mean, you fall literally three stories here. And he lands and he's just like... Oof! Those are definitely broken legs, sir. You don't have, like, the special portal boots that let you jump from high heights here. You definitely just broke your legs several times. Maybe Gengar uses ghost powers to fix them. I don't know. But, just... I mean, let's not think about the physics. Like I said, don't think about the physics of Hippowdon Temple, you'll have a bad time. But still, Lucky definitely broke his legs. Just... No doubt about my about, about that. He definitely, definitely broke his legs, but apparently not, because that's what the game said. Anyway, get a Magneton for healing, just in case, because, as you can imagine, it's, uh... Rhythmy's gonna give us a call here and be like, Strong Pokemon are up ahead! Be careful! Are you prepared? I am prepared. Blossom, shut the hell up! I'm tired of your shit! Ugh, that cry is really annoying. But here's the yellow gem. So where is Keith, though? We haven't seen Keith all. We've seen his Buizel, but we haven't seen him. And he clearly did not get the yellow gem because it's still here. What could possibly be going on? Well, we'll learn. We'll learn. Anyway, the yellow gem's here. We're going to go ahead and cap er, capture it. Yes, we're going we're gonna to circle the yellow gem. We're gonna, it looks like a Helix Fossil, actually, from here. All praise the Helix Fossil, question mark. Uh, I'm looking forward to when people watch this video two years in the future and don't even remember what Hochelay's Pokemon was. Because it's just not going to be relevant anymore and that by that time, but... I will make references to things that happen now so people in the future will be confused. Also, Cresselia is the boss Pokemon with the face here. Surprise, surprise. I mean, it's another Legendary from 4th Gen. Can't be too surprised. I mean, Lucario wasn't, but he was pretty close to Legendary status. And, well, he wasn't really a Legendary, but... He was still a unique Pokemon 4th Gen, so we can let it slide. Anyway, Cresselia is interesting, but like I said, the, the uh, ooh, wow, that hurt. The, uh, the double charge, especially with slow move Pokemon like, like this, just absolutely destroy them. But you want to be careful because he has one special attack here that's going to get really annoying when you get later on. He'll summon a ball of an orb permanently that'll continuously circle around the arena. So make sure you watch out for that beam. That does a lot of damage. And, uh... Yeah, he's gonna keep summoning these orbs, so we're gonna want to get this quickly here because as these orbs get summoned, it's going to uh, make our life a lot more difficult, so here comes the third and final one. So we now have three orbs circling the arena at different speeds and at different areas. As you can see, uh, it's a little hard to deal with getting a supercharge when you have this much stuff going on. Okay, that's not gonna work out. Okay, we're gonna, go, we're gonna stick with single charges from now on because this is not gonna work out otherwise. And just pick our battles here, because now we don't really have the room to actually get this. Nope, that one's coming up right there, and it's not gonna let us do it. This could give us a chance to. Nope. Okay. Yeah, with all the orbs, it's really hard to get a double charge going. Nope. Don't have to. Ah. Yeah, it's just really not working out here. And then as long as he has that purple orb around, it's really hard to get a loop in. I'm just gonna wait for my opportunity here. Nope. Can't afford to get hit by that. Man, I always have a lot more easier time with these Pokemon in my practice file, and then I. Oh, here I go. Ample opportunity, let's go for- Damn it. I can't actually get hit by that beam. If I get hit by that beam, I'm dead. Uh, nope, I have to. I have to go for the heal here. Glad I took that Magneton, because that got a little spooky. 
Okay, yeah, Cresselia is hard because you have to avoid all those orbs. You have to avoid its beam because it does way too much damage. I'm getting my butt kicked a little bit here by this one. This is not as easy as I thought. Cause all these orbs make it really hard to establish any sort of charge here. Which I guess is the point. You're not supposed to be able to get these char the double charge off easily because as you can see, it utterly destroys the boss. So just take any loops you can. Oh, I might be able to get the double charge off here. Oh, I can. Oh, ample opportunity. Go! There we go. Oh, I can't believe I did not get hit by that beam. That was like razor, razor close there. Okay, looks like I didn't need to actually use Magneton after all, so that's good at least, but holy crap, that kicked my butt. At least this will be a level up, get us back to full health. We're going to need it. But with that, we have ourselves the yellow gem. And no Team Dim Sum presence either. Very interesting. Very suspicious. So... That was a bit more of a struggle than I intended it to. It's it's hard to talk and focus on capturing it at the same time. I, I swear I'm not terrible at this game. I'm just mediocrely average. I swear. Okay, that looks more like a moon than a... I mean, it makes sense. Cresselia's lore is based around the moon. You know, it's basically the moon Pokemon, so it makes sense that they're guarding a gem that looks like the moon. So it's not really a helix fossil, it's a moon. Whatever, close enough. We got ourselves a Moonstone. Oh wow, I can evolve a Clefairy now. Yippee! So, we got ourselves the Yellow Gem, but where is Keith? Good question, game. Good question. I was actually about to say that, and the game kind of mimicked my thoughts there. So we head out here, back to, uh... Or, well, we're going to head out back here, because that's where the teleportation thing is. But, uh, things are not gonna be... so... cut and dry. Because as we head to the way out... So, first of all... There's an approaching helicopter. How the hell did they get a helicopter in here? Seriously, how did they fit this heli- Like, the entrance that I got in here was definitely not big enough. And that's- is, Keith is in a Team Dim Sun helicopter. Interesting. But it's not Keith, of course. Uh, so, he's been using Keith's voicemail all along. Oh man, that wasn't actually Keith. Who would have seen this plot twist coming? So, Team Dim Sun actually does have a presence here. It's just that they were waiting for us to get the gem first for once, being smart, not trying to take on the gem. Um, and unfortunately, he's used Keith as bait. So, uh, one of the Sinus Trio, his name is Heath. He's not Keith, he's Heath. Get it? That's why he tried, he almost mixed it up a few times. He also talks really weird. Just saying. So, uh,. He tried to get the yellow the yellow gem, but Cresselia beat him. But instead of a, ironically, you know, the stereotypical stupid member of the trio is actually the smartest, because all the other ones just kind of bash their head against the wall trying to get past the gem guardian. Instead, no, he uh, he basically Keith couldn't capture it either because the Cresselia. When the Cresselia was tough, so I, I can't blame you there, Keith. But uh, he's smart. He's using he's gonna use Keith as bait, so he uh, used Keith to lure us here to get the to beat the Cresselia. We have the yellow gem. But the problem for us is now, uh, we have a bit of an issue, because we're going to have to do a little bit of a trade here. The yellow gem that we need to save the world for Keith's life, because he's been kidnapped by Team Dim Sun. Oh, Keith, you had one job! Can't you do one thing right to save the world? No, you have to go ahead and get yourself captured, and now I have a moral dilemma. Uh, and of course I'm with the protagonist, so I have to take the option that saves a life. Although it actually gives you a choice, it's like, make trade? No! I'm not making this trade! One life for the entire world? Now I think I'll, I'll save the world, but of course, you know... We have to be the good friend, because he's gonna keep asking... Until, uh... You let him do it, you can't, you just can't, no, just, he repeats, you're in an infinite loop. Why even give us the choice if you're gonna put us in an infinite loop game? Alright, so we have to give up the yellow gem, unfortunately, which... It is a big problem. Without the Yellow Gem, we can't complete our plan to stop the Shadow Crystal, and now it's in Team Dim Sun's hands. Our plans are quickly falling apart here. This is our last little gambit, and unfortunately, he screwed everything up here. And of course, uh, in order to ensure they get away, they're going to give us a little bit of an extra bonus present, which would be a boss. So instead of fighting the Team Dim Sun Pokemon before uh, the, bo the Gym Guardian, we actually look the other way around. We have to get to fight the Gym Guardian, and then we're forced to fight the Tim Di Team Dim Sun boss. Without even giving a chance to heal. And uh, it's the Mangazone, so Mangazone, not actually a healing type Pokemon in this game, it's actually a boss instead, which makes sense. So Heath, is, I guess, is the electric type user of the group. I mean, he's yellow, makes sense, I guess. 
So, Magnazone! Another boss with a face today. So... The third and final Sinus Trio's Pokemon. Although this time he's not even he, he's not even sticking around to watch. He's, he booked it. He's he's a smart he's a smart one really if you think about it. He uh he tricked us or he didn't trick us, but he forced us to have to give up the yellow gem. And instead of sticking around, he's just like, nope, I'm booking it, leaving Pokemon for a distraction. Once again, though, a double charge will destroy the health of a uh, boss Pokemon. So just avoid the electric beams, avoid the electric ball. He's gonna do his uh, shunk, which will give us a chance to charge up here. Just go the single charge while we wait for him to do his move here. We'll go ahead and let him establish his ball, and then just try to avoid it while we circle, which we... I mean, we, got, we did some decent damage. I'm willing to take a little bit of damage if it means we can get some good, strong charge two hits on the boss, because that just destroys their health completely. So, I believe a shock should be coming up here. That that was just terrible. Yep, this should be a shock, so we'll just use this chance to charge... Nope, he's just doing the balls. Okay. Does this mean this is me a shock coming up? Yeah. But... Okay, I guess he's just, he's just not doing the close range shock anymore, he's just all chain between these two. I mean, that's fine, just gives me an easy capture. So Magnezone, not nearly as challenging as Cresselia, doesn't have all the annoying purple orbs everywhere. It just kind of shoots electric orbs everywhere, which isn't really that threatening. So in the end, it's just kind of like, eh, well, okay, I guess. But, well, we've, we've dealt with uh, Team Dim Sun's or Keith's Pokemon. But, and we rescued Keith at least, which he was in trouble all along. I mean, surprise, surprise, like I said. But they have the yellow gem now. And that might be a bit of a problem. So, even though it's a mission clear, we, uh, we never got the yellow gem. We rescued Keith. At least Keith's getting back on his feet here. He's a little embarrassed. He, uh, kind of didn't live up to his name as a top ranger today. He kind of, uh, let us down. But at least his weasel cares. And there, the two of them are reunited, so at least, you know, at least we did something. We saved him, but... Unfortunately, today's victory goes to Dean Dim Sun, and now the game gets interesting because... This is kind of the part of the game where Team Dim Sun starts to make a bit of a comeback, and... We're gonna have to find some way to get, to get that yellow gem out of their clutches now, and that's not gonna be an easy feat. Anyway, we've, uh, we've taken care of everything you do in a Hepaton Temple, though. A bit of a downer ending, but... Let's go ahead and head out and complete this mission. And uh, looking at the time, probably gonna split into two videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, report to uh, Professor Hastings in the Union now, because uh, as you can imagine, we got the gem, so everything's been taken care of. But uh, as you can imagine, that also means it's time for more quests. So as usual, uh, next episode will be a quest episode. We have. Uh, this this guy, this guy, uh, a Sneasel, and a Misdreavious, so we might be getting some new partner Pokemon as well, which will be interesting. So, we have four new quests to take care of, but we'll go ahead and report to Professor Hastings before we end this episode, because otherwise it's going to be kind of weird to split this into two. Um, we'll give a little bit more time to the video, because I don't, with all the quests we have to do, we won't really have that much time to fit in this anyway, so we'll go ahead and take care of that now. That seems like a good plan. So, capture the Star Raptor. Takes two loops now. Wow. Look how far we've come if we can just two loop a Star Raptor. It's just silly. I mean, it doesn't give any experience now because it's been so. I mean, we've come a long way if you think about it. This is what, episode. How much episodes now? 40 something? We've come a long way. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead. Head on. Head, 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 head. I can speak English, I swear. We're gonna head on, on the Star Raptor. As uh, you can see, we can now have access to Hupadon Temple and Haruba Desert whenever we want, but we're gonna head to the Ranger Union, and, uh, it's a long way for Star Raptor to fly, but we can fly anywhere we want now. I'm pretty sure we've actually unlocked every area in the game at this point, I want to say. Possibly. But we'll go ahead and report to the Union, and, uh, go from there. So, unfortunately, we're gonna report that our mission was a bit of a failure. So, uh, the Yellow Gem has fallen into the hands of Team Dim Sun, we're just gonna have to... Devise a new plan accordingly, as Professor Hastings said. I mean, he has a good point. Why worry about things you can't change right now? Do what you can to improve the things you can change. So, at least Keith is safe. I mean, I don't know if that's the main thing. Saving the world's kind of a big deal! But, uh... We're gonna go ahead. She's gonna give us a day off, I guess. So, we're gonna go ahead, take a nap, and prepare ourselves for the next day. Although, it's gonna take us uh, right into the next day, and the next uh, cutscene, so we'll watch all that before we 
call it a video, I think. So, the next day, what happens? Go on. There we go. I hear the music. So, it's time. They have the yellow gem. We have the red and blue gem. But unfortunately, and, and, but we also have their plans, and we have Isaac. So, what can we do with this situation? We're going to learn a bit more of this before we uh, wrap up this episode. So, Keith couldn't even sleep. He's still feeling a bit bad, I think, about his failure here. But we're learning about the, we're gonna learn more about the incredible machine now, because uh, unfortunately the data disk is password protected. So unfortunately Isaac's not really cooperating. He's still kind of having his moral crisis. He was used. He kind of doesn't trust people now. Poor Isaac. He's kind of lost his naivety, which always can be a bit of a shock. Got a feel for the guy. But we are learning some more about the journal at least. So another entry in the journal. Uh, Pouring over documents and writings, he learns about the red, blue, blue and yellow gem, and this pretty much confirms our, uh, it confirms our belief that the shadow crystal is weak to the harmony of the three gems. So, all the gems are related, but we, we need all three gems for it to work. Unfortunately, we don't have all three, we're missing the third one. So like I said, interesting developments in the plot here. Not gonna be as easy as we thought to combat Team Dim Sun, and they're not going down without a fight. So, uh, Brighton Hall clearly is the one who learned all of this, but now, Isaac has made a decision. He's thought th things through last night, and he finally decides that he's no longer part of Al Shuro Team Dim Sun now. He, well, he's basically learned that he can't be as naive either. He learned that, uh, yeah, he basically, he's not an enemy, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's been nice to him here. He's given a comfortable bed, everyone's nice. He's decided to join us instead. He's, he admits his faults, he admits his naivety, and uh, the password's Melody. Of course it's Melody, that makes sense. I mean, you could, you could, professor Hastings, you're like a huge genius professor. You couldn't have thought, oh, maybe I should put his sister's name in here? Makes sense. But also a reminder that Melody exists. Actually kind of important. So uh, this could indeed save Almia. The password's Melody, let's learn. <laughs> There's no, yeah, exclamation mark, no. Thank you for your punctuation lesson, Professor Hastings, but now that we have Isaac's help, we can learn more about this terrible, incredible machine. What is Team Dim Sun's plan? I mean, we're going to have trouble stopping it now that we're on the Yellow Gem, but we should learn what we can. So here we go. We get the underfoot monitor, which is still the most inconvenient way to have a monitor, by the way, having to crane your neck down like this and the blueprint prints being so huge. Seems like a really awkward thing, but it works. I guess it works with the top-down perspective. But that shape, we've seen that shape somewhere. We certainly have the final confirmation that Altru and Team Dim Sun are linked. That, my friends... Okay, get on with it. It's Altru Tower! That was the Incredible Machine all along. And unfortunately, the tower is nearing completion. It's completed tomorrow. We have only one day to stop Team Dim Sun's plans. We're down to the wire, guys. Things are about to get all sorts of real. And at the, tower, at the top of that tower, you can see, that's definitely a crystal. So, it looks like the tower is something that amplifies the power of the Shadow Crystal. But if one little segment of the Shadow Crystal can take over and hypnotize a Pokémon with a Mini Remo, what could a whole tower with a Shadow Crystal do? I shudder to, I shudder to think what the implication of this could be. But, uh, Professor Hastings, shocked by this, needs some time to think. He's locked himself in his room. So, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to learn more about the machine and our plan to stop it today. Professor Hastings needs some time to think, so it's time to take on some more quests. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode, guys. Also, Irma gives us a nice little thing. Capture some strong Pokémon. We might need it. Just a little hint there. Get some good Pokémon before you talk to her again. Just, just a little hint there. And that, just that alone should make you think. What the heck is coming up next if we have to get strong Pokemon before we report to the chairman? Things are about... We're, we're reaching endgame here. They have a giant tower. They have to... <laughs> he's a lovable science nerd. They have a, the yellow gem. They have a giant tower complete tomorrow. We need to act fast or... Bad things will happen. In other words, let's go on some quests instead! Yeah! Also, we get a newspaper report apparently before we uh, go on, so... Clean new energy! Ha! <laughs> Clean new energy, my butt! And the Goer Quad, so and so on and so forth. It's basically All Man Tower. So, 
We're getting close. To the, we're, 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 at, we're at end game here, but we're going to take a little lull to do all of these quests that we have to do. Which, by the way, I think at this point that means that we now have even more? Question mark? We do. We have a lot more than just uh, four quests. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different quests. So it's probably going to take us two episodes to do all these quests. So in the next couple episodes, eight new quests to do have a bunch of new things to get. We're gonna basically gear up, power up, and prepare while Professor Hastings is preparing our mission. We're gonna be staying the next couple episodes, gearing up, preparing for it, and then the end game begins. So, next couple episodes, it's our training for the final battle, but things are moving fast, and very soon, we're gonna have to take the fight to, to them, and it's gonna be either us or them. The world will belong to the Rangers or Team Dim Sun. But uh, apparently he's, Professor Hastings is studying with Isaac, so he's having his alone time. The door is locked, can't get inside to talk to him, so we'll leave him to that in the next episode, guys. Quest happens, it's Lucky70X, sign out. See you guys for the next episode of Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. Bye-bye.